One of the problems about not doing research is you might alienate people who could otherwise be your friends or allies who actually might offer a point of view in their material that you might, if not 100% agreeing with, they might have quite a lot of commonality with you. Here's an example of that from today, from the wonderful world of Simon Webb and his usual attempts to knock down successful black men. Simon today let us know the horrors of Steve McQueen and how Steve McQueen was like um, making a movie. I'll let him speak for himself from the beginning. Let me get rid of it and take it right back to the beginning. And we'll, hit, we'll do about a minute or so, Simon, and then I'll go on to show why this was such a foolish video. Hello again. We are, I suppose, all of us used to the modern convention in television and filmmaking whereby whatever period of English history the production happens to be set in, black Africans and Caribbeans must always be present. This seems to be rather an obsessional interest of Webb's. It's like it's true there are movies where people are having shoehorned in at odd angles. Cleopatra is probably the one I find most annoying. But there's also movies where that doesn't happen. And Simon is particularly having, going to have a go at Steve McQueen over it. Let's listen to about a little bit more by him. And preferably in a starring role. That this makes for a very strange and unrealistic portrayal of this country's past does not seem to bother those producing such things. The important thing being to adhere to the modern trend. The latest such film is called Lid, and it is directed by Steve McQueen, the man who was responsible for the fantasy film Twelve Years a Slave. And a numerous other movies, which we'll be getting to in a minute. One curious thing about this director is that we are familiar with his appearance in a way that... We are familiar, Steve, Simon? You choose to speak for the whole of your audience and know what they're familiar. You have psychic gifts. You are Charles Xavier. A chance, you're a, a Vulcan telepath. How do you know whom we're familiar with? I know what Stephen Green looks like. Some of your subscribers will, some won't. That's about the most you can say with certainty. But we are not with other known, well-known directors. For example, I've watched a number of films directed by James Cameron, so I've got no mental image of him at all. I've... Which is fine. If you do or don't, no big deal, but don't presume that everybody else doesn't. I really don't know what he looks like. With Steve McQueen, though, the case is different, and most of us have memories of what he looks like, the glasses and so on. You don't have memories of his work, though, we'll be getting to that in a moment, too. This is, I think, because his blackness is an integral part of his fame as a director of films, and he's often shown in publicity material from the films with which he is involved. His latest film is called Lit. Let's leave it there with Simon. Had Simon done something more than just look at Steve McQueen's blackness and actually researched his work, he would have found that several of Steve McQueen's movies that he either made himself or acted as co-producer with are to touch upon the Holocaust and issues around it and particularly try to show how the human cost of that and how all we're left with is fractured parts of, of a society that's gone to work with it for people to memorialise it. This is three minutes, a lengthening. It's the trailer for it. It's a documentary, really. For the Jewish inhabitants of Naschels in Poland, nothing remains. The only Before we go on, this was made by Steve's wife, but Steve is co-producer on it. The only thing left is an absence. These three minutes of life were taken out of the flow of time. Fabulous phrase, taken out of the flow of time, because that's all there is left. The continuity of that community has gone. All that's left us bits like that and old photo albums of people long, you know, the destinies we often don't know. Little bits, little shards of, of a vanished community. When I discovered my grandfather's film, all I could do was to piece together the few fragments that remained. Now notice there, from Academy Award-winning co-producer, Steve McQueen. Simon, had you bothered to actually do what historians and people who claim to be historians should do is a few minutes of research, you'd have understood basically all you're presenting is your view of Steve McQueen based on one movie you didn't like, and that really seems to be about all you know about him, nothing much more. 
you presented one that one movie and didn't bother to do ten minutes, five minutes of research. It's why there's such a paucity of depth about your videos about people and why you leap to massive conclusions. It's taken me like literally 10 to 12 minutes to assemble those YouTube links up there. Not exactly a huge amount of time. Here's my cup of coffee. Here's me. I'm sitting there with it. It's taken me a few minutes. So one really asks why you couldn't do it. Here's Steve's wife. Here. I'm an historian by trade. Let me go back to the beginning. My name is Bianca Stichter. I'm the director of the documentary Three Minutes, a length thing that is playing at the spotlight section of the 2022 Sundance Film Festival. I'm very excited to be presenting my movie here. I'm an historian by trade and my documentary is an essay about film and photography, about memory and memorials, about new media and old footage, about seeing and being seen and the astonishing possibility film offers to look someone in the eye from another time. If Steve McQueen really was only interested in black issues, why do you think he worked on that with his wife? Why do you think he worked on this occupied city? which is adapted from his wife's book. In May 1940, Amsterdam was taken over by the Germans. Immediately, they set the clock forward. So it was the same time in Amsterdam as in Berlin. The weather report disappeared from the newspapers. It was now a military secret. Oh, and Simon, the All first movie that on. Steve McQueen became well known for is this, Hunger. At no point that I remember does a black person appear. I think possibly one, I possibly at most, and I may be misremembering this, there's one squaddy on the streets of Northern Ireland who's black who appears for a few seconds, and that I may be mixing up with another movie. But no major character in this is black, and it's about a subject that's very much tied into modern Irish history, the 1981 hunger strikes. So, Simon, I suggest in the future you research your materials. Let's play a few seconds of this. There is no such thing as political murder, political bombing or political... Oh yes, there is, uh, Maggie, and you engage in quite a lot of it, so hush up, bitch. Violence. There is only criminal murder, criminal bombing and criminal violence. We will not compromise on this. Now, this was a very raw movie about a very raw period in modern Irish history. Now, had Simon taken one five minute or five minutes of time looking at Steve McQueen's filmography, it would have popped up as it was, as it more or less made his name and brought him to wider attention. But then it goes again, that's history debunked all over. A channel that claims to be a history channel where a presenter cannot do basic research and seems incapable of it and seems incapable of admitting that and does sloppy biased research, sloppy half assed research that would be chucked back in his face if he was really a, an academic or really a historian. No one would take him with the remotest degree of seriousness. He broadcasts that basically to people. He just wants to broadcast his hate to a lovely group where he can broadcast and show how these black men are getting above themselves. That's the overriding theme whenever black men pop up on a Simon Webb channel video on his channel. Let's be honest. <laughs> 